Hi, I'm Jamie Mitchum. Welcome back to the JC Lake House. Oh my gosh, what a week. It's actually been 11 days since that break-in on Tuesday and everything just kind of slid downhill from there. But then it ended up being the best week ever. Here's what happened. First, I was so mad about the break-in that I didn't go back down to the house. And I actually had a really quiet day catching up on paperwork and my phone didn't ring at all. And it was really peaceful. By the middle of the next day, I figured out that my phone stopped working when AT&T turned off 3G. If you've ever been unlucky enough to spend six and a half hours in an AT&T store and then an hour and a half at home with an AT&T enjoyment expert, you will know what a bad day that was. I had five yards of mulch piled on my driveway, so I decided to stay home and do some yard work the next day. It was great until I had a little accident. And before you say anything, I wasn't doing anything that required safety glasses. I just picked up this long twig on the ground that stuck on something and I tugged it and it snapped up like a whip and hit me in the eye. It went up under my eyelid, bruised my eyeball and scratched the heck out of my cornea. So it was back to urgent care. My right eye was out of commission and my left eye was having sympathy pains and refused to open. So I just laid in the chair for a couple of days. Then things seemed to turn a little positive all at once. I got a call from my uh, metal fabrication shop that my custom curved lentils were ready for Wednesday. Long story for another video. This is attempt number three. Then Ricardo was available to work on Wednesday. And then the roofer called and said they wanted to come on Wednesday at 8 a.m. to finish the chimney flashing, which is another sad long story for another day. But things were really looking up and I thought Wednesday was going to be great. And then I got there and reality set in. The extra mason started on the exterior lentils over a particularly bad window under the front porch, which led to a discussion about another problem area you haven't seen before. Oh, there's the end of it. Look at the end of it. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh wow, look, you can see all the way through to the other side. And the verdict was not good. More on this mess in another video. I went and picked up the lentils, but there was an immediately apparent problem. Okay, I'm back at the metals place. David Coker, if you're watching, you'll understand. Janie mentioned very disturbed. This is my umpteenth try to get these lentils made. I even paid extra to have a template made before they started. And I just picked them up. Nothing fits. They've reversed the profile. This side should be wide, this side narrow, and the length is wrong. So these won't even remotely fit. And I've got a crew of masons. I'm paying a lot of money to sit around and I've got nothing to do today. I went ahead and took them back to the house to see if we could make them work, but there was no way. So I had to return them again. Ricardo had kept himself busy by prepping another window for an exterior lentil replacement. And the final repointing of the back porch was getting done, so that was all right. I left to go do some work at the Lucas Apartments, and then Ricardo sent me this text. Live termites adjacent to the dining room fireplace. I was not happy. I put on gloves to go clean up this mess. I think probably some possums did it. We have a lot of wildlife on the lot, and it's always something. I want to show you what happened last summer. Yeah, that's a possum. How do you get in here? Hi. Hi. It's okay. It's okay. The guys were not happy. They do not like possums. Come on, let's go outside. Let's find a way to get outside. How do you even get in here? All right, did you just go up in the wall? Okay, did he just go up inside the wall? Okay, my lucky penny for today. But also, one, two, three, four, five babies. Let's take this board off. Oh, 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 o
These little guys are fast. It took over 30 minutes to trace them all around and get them picked up and put in the bucket. You're big enough to be on your own. Get this one off. Get that over there. I'm a little embarrassed to show this part because it was not the brightest thing I've ever done. Hey. In the end, there were nine babies and one of them ran under the giant pile of beadboard that we had salvaged and it took at least an hour to move it all and get him out of there. It was quite the ordeal, but everybody was safely relocated into the bamboo. Without the lentils, I ran out of projects for Ricardo and his crew to do, so they went to Lucas Apartments to take advantage of the scaffolding that was set up when I put in some new windows over there. And the weather was fabulous, so they started pressure washing. I did get to meet some of my subscribers who stopped by to give me a beautiful Victorian couch, so that was good. I was ready to call it a day when the roofers called to say they would be here at 530 I hated to say no because this has been going on for over two months, so I figured if they were willing to work in the dark, I'd stay and let them. They finished up around 9.30 and I was freezing to death. It didn't occur to me to go sit in my car until about 9 o'clock. Thank goodness I had planned on spending the night anyway, so I didn't have to drive back to Houston. I can't say the next day was bad, it just was not what I had planned for the week. I had only planned on doing that little U-shaped area, but I left without leaving explicit instructions. And now this is going on. So, that's okay. Sooner or later it needed to be done. What are you tied to? Are you tied to the chimney? If you fall, go that way. I spent the day doing something I hate, trying to finish organizing and cleaning the carriage house. The mother of one of my tenants is coming to stay for a few days, so it needed to get done. By the end of the day, I was tired and ready to go to Houston. About 10 miles up the road, traffic came to a complete standstill. I moved less than a mile in an hour and a half. My ETA to get home would have been around 9 p.m. So as soon as I got to an exit, I U-turned and headed back to Galveston for another night. Then Friday, the most remarkable thing happened. Okay, I'm in the dining room and I have an incredible find. I'm the most excited I think I've been since I started on this house. Ricardo was pulling off the canvas on the walls and when he did, he uncovered this awesome hand-painted design around the top of the walls and it looks like there was probably a trim piece there where that white horizontal line is that went around creating that space and it was taken down when this house got remodeled in 1920 by Eliza Kempner. That wall's probably been patched but you can see it, oops sorry, it picks up and comes around and again the evidence of that trim piece there and continuing all the way across the fireplace it's just, it's awesome. So, a good end to a crappy week. I needed that. Coming in a close second to my love of tile is my love for decorative painting. This isn't fancy, but it's mine. And it's one, well, it's the second thing I've kind of uncovered in the house. The first was that linoleum up in the third floor bathroom. It poses a huge restoration dilemma, but I've already got ideas swirling around in my head, and it just made me so happy to see this. I can't tell you how excited I was. Start, do only the new ones first. Make sure we have enough stuff. 
it was critical to do some more termite treatment around the dining room fireplace since live termites were still in the area. And then I was packing up my car and I noticed in the back of the yard a sunflower was blooming, which I thought was really appropriate timing with everything going on in the world today. And I went to get in my car and I found a lucky penny. And there it is, the end of my week. My lucky penny for today. So that was my week. More problems than solutions and totally off schedule, but hey, it turned out fabulous. The Lee Kempner House was too special to be owned by any one person, so a nonprofit was set up with a mission to return this amazing house to its original glory and make sure it never falls into decay again. The doors will be open to all who want to come visit and learn about its place in Galveston history. You can be a part of preserving this house for future generations by donating through our website, leekempnerhouse.org. You can also find a volunteer sign-up sheet on the website if you'd like to get directly involved. All the work that's being done is documented here on YouTube, and just by watching these videos, you're also playing a part in saving this incredible property. So don't miss out on any of the trials and tribulations as we tackle some big issues. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up with our efforts. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you next time here in Galveston, Texas at the amazing Lee Kempner House.